Coming up on today's show, touchdown at the Crypto Super Bowl. Stella is our star coin of the week. And Stat Attack, we lift the lid on the secrets behind the incredible data that drives crypto. This show really is Nirvana for number crunchers. Ooh. Boobies! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the show. When it comes to all things crypto, this is the show that puts the current into currency, the wow in Dow, and the cool in cold storage. As ever, give us a like, add your comments, and subscribe. Joining me today, coming out of Canada, like a horn blaring freedom convoy of juggernauts, it's John Doe. What's up, Tom? Good to see you again. What's up, my man? Good to see you as always. What's happening in Canada? Not much, you know. Um, I were heating up a little bit, I guess, earlier this year. Usually it's cold in February, but this time, this time around, I think we got minus 16, 15. So that's heat for here. Yes, minus 16. That's heated up. There you go. <laughs> and stay in West Side. I think it's cold where they are as well. Uh, it's over to Denver to say hi to hot new data experts making waves from Nakji. It's David Kim and Ali Zhang. Welcome to the show, guys. How are you and how's Denver? Great. Thank you for having us. Um, it's quite cold here uh, for us native Californians, but um, excited for the week ahead for East Denver. Really cool. What, what happened to East Denver? Uh, you know, I have uh, visions of Vitalik getting drunk and body popping. Is that the sort of thing that's going to happen this week? What's going down? I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever seen him drunk, but he did dance. I remember that. Dead team. <laughs> it like memed out where they do this eat dance. But I think, you know, everyone's pretty excited about eat Denver this year, especially. It's one of the biggest conferences for devs and the industry has grown so big. Um, there's a lot of big people flying from all over the world. And the big boom with NFTs going mainstream last year You'll, you'll see a huge uh, diversity in the attendance, right? Not just the devs, but you're going to see artists here, investors. So it should be pretty spectacular this week. Yeah, super interesting. It, it almost might turn into the South by of crypto or blockchain, I guess, at some point, mightn't it? Yeah, definitely. Very good. Well, welcome to the show. Great to have you with us. Uh, we're going to kick things off with the news headlines. <laughs> So first up, we're going to chat about the Super Bowl and crypto ads for the first time. There were multiple crypto ads featured in the Super Bowl commercials, reaching an audience of 100 plus million. FTX bagged Larry David and went with this. I call it the wheel. Yeah, I don't think so. This is a miss. Brother David, behold! It's a fork! I got dead forks right here, baby! A toilet? We're not the animals! We go outside like humans! Hancock! No king! The people shall have the right to vote! Even the stupid ones? Yeah. Oh. Edison, can I be honest with you? It stinks. Nobody's gone to the moon ever! Why not? It's far! It's too far! Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. <laughs> that was a well done ad, wasn't it? What do you think? <laughs> oh, that it was, it was hilarious. I like how they kind of made him like this old dude that was denying everything happening. And then what? now we're at crypto and it's next big thing. He's a good one, isn't it? I mean, Larry David's very, very good. Uh, I, I think they sort of smashed the ad. And Coinbase went, I would say, completely the other way. Apparently, they spent $14 million um, on this. Wait for it. Wait for it. Do I scan it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
and that's it. That ran for a minute. Um, David, the uh, the Coinbase app crashed, I think, uh, due to traffic numbers with a lot of people scanning that and trying to get through to the app. Yeah, that was quite interesting. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of the commentary you can just read on Twitter. There's like mixed reviews about the ad. Some people like love it, ingenious in terms of how engaged it is with every the audience. And then you had some people made some comments. I think it was like Blockstream guy made some comments. And I think he was just trying to show that, you know, internet can be broken, but Bitcoin never breaks. I think that was kind of some of the commentary that I did. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, both, I think both ads were pretty cool. I, I liked FTX ad a little bit better, but um, I think that was really interesting. In other news, uh, in Canada, John, KBMG added Bitcoin and Ethereum to their balance sheet. Um, and uh, David, I know you've got first-hand knowledge of the big four adopting crypto. I believe you work with them. Yeah, so my former career before I did Startup World was working in big four since I graduated uni back in 2005. So I was out there, you know, with Deloitte and PwC doing, you know, enterprise stuff. Um, and actually, you know, back in 2017, um, PwC helped out a project uh, in Hong Kong and we actually accepted Bitcoin as payment. So this hit Wall Street Journal headlines and this is in 2017 before a lot of enterprise started touching Bitcoin. Uh, so I thought that was interesting for a KPMG angle. I think more the merrier. And I think um, Canada is trying to make some big waves when it comes down to being more open and adopting the technology as well as Bitcoin um, as a digital asset. So um, it's awesome to hear more people to come on board. Very interesting that they have added crypto to their balance sheet. Um, and finally, Netflix have just ordered a documentary uh, around the Bitfinex hack. Uh, I think they've got the director um, from Tiger King and uh, another well-known documentary that, that was recently aired on Netflix. So they got a decent decent team together and they're going to put something um, put something together around that. Now let's remind ourselves of Heather Morgan's true crimes, crimes against music. Spirit of a revolutionary power of a dictator, love to be contrary, but I'm fly like a gator. I got pilot blood, I'm a real risk taker, pirate riding the flood, badass money maker. Ali, oh. the, the Bitfinex hack was all over the news with Heather Morgan and her husband, uh, Ilya Lichtenstein. What did you make of all this? Well, first of all, I thought the music video was great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that the industry is moving forward and that people who are responsible for um, money laundering are being found and prosecuted and hopefully, um, yeah, held responsible. Yeah, I think we'll obviously find out a bit more um, in the Netflix documentary. Uh, John, you've done a bit of rapping, mate, haven't you? Uh, you worried about this razzle calm fallout tarnishing your rap? No, I'm more I'm more worried about where uh, how secure my uh, crypto is on exchanges if people like that can uh, get a hold of it. <laughs> Three point six billion was it? Three point six billion, yeah. And yeah, are you crazy. secretly wondering whether you can wear a gold coat and a bum bag? I think I'm gonna have to step my game up, like that music <laughs> video. That's what. That's it. That's um, what's next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now time. For the gospel, according to this week's Digital Deities. Welcome real-time data, Genie, Ali and David. Um, good to have you on the show. Let's get into chatting about what you guys do on blockchain data. John, data is your area and your expertise. You I want to run with so, this? yeah. All right, thanks guys for coming on board. Now, Ali. Uh, give us your elevator pitch. What is NACG all about? Yeah, NACG is all about grabbing all the blockchain data and making it easily accessible for Web3 companies. So that includes everyone from uh, 
from DApps, decentralized apps like uh, exchanges, um, also individual traders, and enterprise. It's crucial because um, not everyone is an expert at data infrastructure. In fact, there's I feel like there's very few data infrastructure experts in this industry at uh, the current time. And so we make it easy so that um, a lot of these people don't need to hire necessarily uh, any data infrastructure experts in order to get their products up and running quickly. Yeah, like I guess a platform like OpenSea or whatever else comes up new with, with NFTs, it's good. It's going to be good that they have that open source data to use and everyone can view it, right? Yeah, 100%. Again, the key question becomes not how, not in terms of getting the data, it's more like who do I use? Do I use my in-house team or do I use another party? And the key question the CEO is going to ask is how much money can I save and how much faster is it going to be? Yeah, because I noticed, I seen with a lot of uh, crypto platforms, Coinbase it's themselves, they use Amazon Web Service. Mm -hmm. But I did notice sometimes when that goes down, that screws up everyone, even WhatsApp, Facebook, everything just shuts down. So even though it is a third party, there will need to be something that's more decentralized. So the data is always available. Yeah, exactly. And so we see that as the next big thing as well, is instead of all these centralized um, cloud services, we're going to be heading towards more decentralized services. So Nakshi being one of them. Yeah. Another thing, speaking of the next big thing, how do you think the data that you guys can uh, provide or feed, what can that do in uh, predicting what's coming next in terms of DeFi, prices, trends, GameFi, Metaverse? I guess when it comes down to GameFi, I think that a lot of people will be surprised this year. Um, now, the number of transactions, you could take a look at what's happening on Axis Infinity, which is one of the top games, etc. But... You know, a lot of these game by projects aren't unlocking the full potential of all the stuff that's available yeah. for blockchain technology like smart contracts because we actually see all that data. So, you know, there's some stuff that's happening, but I wouldn't say a huge amount. So this is the year where I do think that game five projects will start to balloon up. There's a, probably about at least a billion dollars of dry powder specifically ready to allocate to game five projects. I think that the recent news a few days ago, the Korean sovereign party said that they're going to invest billions into the metaverse. And this is the Korean sovereign government fund, which means that it makes sense that a lot of these other sovereign government funds are going to try to see how they can invest into the metaverse. Into the metaverse. So, yeah, and that's like a different topic, right? And everyone's trying to figure out what is this metaverse going to be? Because you have Facebook trying to do meta, yeah. right? And have other guys in Web3 world trying to do sandbox, Decentraland, you know, even, even Solana has their own metaverse play. So everyone trying to do a metaverse play. But I guess the big open question is, is, is the end user going to go for the decentralized platform or are they going to go for the centralized platform? And, you know, whether it's, you know, metaverse or data, we do both think, you know, Ali and I, that going forward from an end user perspective is people seem to be more attracted to the decentralized play. And that's kind of like what's happening is, you know, Sandbox just signed Gucci as IP. Yeah. I mean, these are, and Ralph Lauren, I think, right? So these are very conservative companies that are making their yeah. decision kind of go for that play. So I don't know, it seems to be going that direction. Okay, thank you guys. So to get insight into the future, we know that blockchain data is going to be a big part of that. And Nakji are one of the main providers. Now, time for the kind of data breach we are all happy to lower our firewalls for. It's our weekly charts check. So we have had a price bounce on Bitcoin after an 82 plus day downtrend. The big question is, is this part of a bigger longer term recovery or is this a little bump in a continued downtrend? Now, our first graph shows us that we have about 25 percent of the total Bitcoin supply holding at a loss at the moment. This is down from previous weeks as the price has risen. But interestingly, short-term holders, 
in our second graph uh, have for the first time in a while, if you look on the right hand side of this chart, just gone into um, profit and short term holders going into profit is normally a bullish signal. Short term holders in a loss is a bearish signal. They have been sitting in a loss for a while. They have just dipped into a profit. Will this hold? Will we get a bounce here or will we continue to the downside? Uh, we will have to wait and see. John, from a technical analysis, what have you got for us? So for TA, we're going to have another look at Bitcoin's weekly chart here. Let's pull it up and see how things are looking. And like Tom just said, the short term holders are finally in profit. And since this move here in November, Bitcoin has been in this downtrend uh, from the top. We did bottom out down about 52% or so. And it's been now about three weeks now that Bitcoin has been in a decent recovery. So now we need to see how price consolidates at this range here uh, to build support at about 42,000. And then either we have the move up to that next resistance close to 50, 52, or we, re we go head back down and retest the lows down towards 35,000. And here on a daily chart, if we look at the momentum, we do have a nice decent bounce and potentially a bottom forming here. We will need to see how price heads back down to test support. Now we have two levels actually down at about 36,000 and then down at about 33,000. And then the upside we have right here, like I just said, around 50 to 52,000 as that next uh, resistance level. So when we come back next week, we will see either price will continue consolidating, moving sideways, or we will test that support or that resistance level. So that's Bitcoin's weekly chart. Um, we did have a major run here for about two, three weeks or so now, but this next week was the first correction from that run. So we'll see how things play, uh, play out here. Thank you, John. Great stuff. Now, time to discover which currency has caught our eye on the crypto catwalk. Strutting its stuff, it's our coin of the week. This week's coin is Stella. Stella is the company, XLM or Lumens is the coin. And what they want to do is make payments and transactions as easy and seamless as possible. It sounds a bit like Ripple, which we covered a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it is, it's co-founded, or sorry, it's founded by the co-founder of Ripple, Jed McCaleb. And Ripple and Stella both do similar things. Uh, Ripple's a little more focused on banks and institutions. And Stella is a bit more focused on uh, individuals, particularly in the developing world. Uh, now, uh, it is being used and built upon uh, in Africa, in some of the smart cities that Akon is building in Uganda and Senegal. Uh, John, what are your views on Stella and how it's being used at the moment? It's usually my second option to XRP when I want to send a uh, fast transaction. So it's good that if, if it is being used in developing countries for payments, because that's exactly what it can do and it can handle. And for a coin actually to be built on top of Stellar, that's interesting because that's probably going to be one of the first like smart cities other than Dubai, like what we've had in the past 20 years. This uh, a con city, I think that's what it's called is, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting how he uses crypto because he wants that to be the main currency, right? And being built on Stellar, that's kind of uh, bullish for the uh, Stellar uh, ecosystem. And you named it A-Coin. Nice little touch. Yeah. It's not about <laughs> but you named it A-Coin. As a, as, a as a hard name, A-Coin. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ali, what are your views on this? And, um, you know, is this, is this stuff we're going to see a lot more in the future, crypto providing opportunities to people who don't have it at the moment? Just in general, I think programmable money will be very or is a huge thing for developing countries. It gives people access to um, different financial products that they normally wouldn't have access to. Um, for example, with DeFi, loans, all these things. So, um, yeah, I think it's a good thing overall. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much on the same page with um, Ali. You know, I do think, especially when it comes down to developing countries, um, they're allowed to kind of leverage technology and basically skip uh, a modernization phase. 
versus um, developed countries, it's a little bit more difficult to kind of upgrade because you have a people problem. You need to kind of convince the board, et cetera. Um, and there's other things that need to get voted on before they adopt the technology versus when it comes down to developing countries, um, it's a win-win situation in terms of being able to touch so many people in a short amount of time. So super bullish when it comes down to programmable money and being able to allow the normal person in these developing countries access to money in their wallet or in their phone. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the most exciting long-term things about blockchain and crypto um, is the fact that it can get in the hands of people that historically haven't had access to the same things we're used to in the Western world. So uh, very interesting to see how that progresses. So a big thank you to our guests, regular guests, John and Ali and David. Uh, we'll be joined by a new guest next week and have all the week's news. That's it for now. Bye. <laughs>